Praise God. I just get hallelujah. God bless you. Amen. From Canada, yes. And he's from the States. When we come Canada. together, it's Well, God's going to do something in, in this nation. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, God is good. Amen. And uh, Amen. welcome uh, to this place here in Birmingham. Praise the Lord, Birmingham people. Um, my name is David Lynn, and I'm a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, an ordained minister, not a fly-by-night guy. I love the Lord. I'm educated. But that's not the point. The point of the matter is, I'm just introducing myself. There's somebody that's greater than my education and yours. There's somebody better than you and me. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Bible describes him as the Word of God. The Word of God is how we get to know God. In fact, no one can know God outside of his revelation. And that's why we declare the greatest revelation that God has ever declared and revealed from the beginning unto the end. It's his son. His son, Jesus Christ, is the word of God, the revelation of God. The Bible describes Jesus Christ as the image of the invisible God. The Bible even says, within him was the fullness of God and is the fullness of God manifested. The Bible even describes Jesus Christ as the truth, the very thing that we go to school for the very thing that we believe in on inside of our hearts is the truth or we seek after is the truth the bible describes jesus as the truth that's a very big claim for a man to be the truth now can he truly be what he said he was can jesus christ truly be the truth can he be the revelation of truth can he be the revelation of god himself well, here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that God made mankind in his image, in the likeness of God. Cover up. And so in a very, very interesting way, all of humanity reveals God to a degree. But as you can see, humanity has failed over and over. In fact, when we leave humanity to themselves, they only make mistakes. They only fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The soul that sins shall die. And each person left up to their own means, up to their own ambitions, will only find themselves distant from God, lower than God, in need of God. But there's one person that came on the scene, was born of a virgin, who dwelt within human flesh, and did something different from all of us. This man named Jesus Christ, revealed God, was declared to be the Son of God with power, rose from the dead, overcame sin, was tempted in every way as we were, went through the same obstacle course of life, and sat on the right hand of God the Father, is coming again to judge the living and the dead, and is the only person in history that has made claims that only God could make. He said, I am. Before Abraham was, I am. He even says that he is the life. His, his, his uh, companions, his disciples declared Jesus Christ as someone who was the giver of life, the creator of the heavens and the earth, and said all things were created by him and through him and were created for him. This Jesus Christ is someone we need to contend with, someone we, meet, we need to make sense of, someone we need to understand in these last days. Why? Because the three major religions of the planet all are looking forward to the coming of the Messiah, the Anointed One. All three major religions are looking forward to this person named Jesus Christ. Now that says that he's a very interesting figure. That says that everything is focused on this person, and that means we need to contend with his identity. We need to make sense of why the focus is on this man named Jesus. Why? As a Muslim, maybe you're saying today, well, this Jesus is a very honored figure in my religion. He's a very great prophet. You need to ask yourself, why is this Jesus 
always spoken about in my book, in my religion, hey, and amongst Marty. Christians, and even amongst Jews. Uh, email and talk Why to is charity Jesus about the central that? figure Make sure of it you all. Get in, uh, in contact with the charity Christians, about that. the Jehovah Witness, and all denominations need to also contend with who this Jesus Christ figure is. People say that he he embodies the, the characteristics and the, the attributes of God. The Jehovah Witnesses would say, well, he's very close to God. He's a God. But the Bible also says no God would uh, be created. Charity, are you there? Was created before or after creation. Nothing will be like God in all of eternity. But yet Jesus Christ uh, has Marty, go to the website. The titles uh, of God. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is declared the Word of God, the, revel the, the revealer of God. Jesus Christ is, 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 called the, uh, is seated on the throne of God. So something about this Jesus Christ figure is, is important for us to understand. And I'm right, hoping cool. by the grace of God to reveal this to you today. Now I'm saying here to you today that no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, this Jesus Christ, according to the Word of God, came for you. He came for you. The Bible says He came unto His own. He came unto His own, His own people. Now who is it that owns the people of Israel? Who is it that called the people of Israel and chose the people of Israel to be His sons? The Bible says He called His son out of Egypt. That was the people of Israel. So yes, God has many sons in that sense. Israel was a son, but Israel failed. Adam was also a son of God. The Bible says that in, in, in the Gospels, it says that Adam was the son of God. But this son of God failed. So who is it? Who is it that is the true son of God? The Bible says Jesus is the true, unique son of God. And he came for you. Why? Why? Because the Father that created all the all, all of creation, all the plant life, all the animals, desires to be in a relationship with you. The God of the universe desires you to be in a relationship with Him. Because He made you. He made you to be like Him. He made you to be in communion with Him. He made you to know Him. He wants you to survive. Because you have a glimpse of His glory. You have a glimpse of His power. You carry His life within your veins. That's why He wants to see you continue. But there's another principle at work. The principle of death. The principle of evil. The principle of shame. When we distance ourselves from God and His very, very own presence. When we do that. The only thing we do is show ourselves fools. We show ourselves as God's believers, not God's. We show ourselves as as deceivers, or people that have been deceived, liars, or people that have been lied to. How do I know that? Because if we were created in the image of God, and if we have the life of God. We have not shown the glory of God. We have not carried out the ambitions of God or even reflected His glory. We've reflected something different. And we see that in our own shame, and our own corruption. We see that over and over by the things that we choose and the things that we say in our failed relationships. This shows us that we're not complete without God. We have God's nature inside of us as human beings. We're made in the image of God. Welcome, but the Gary. moment we decide to take out the plug up from the socket, the moment we decide to disconnect ourselves from God, we see who we really are. We see that we're not God. We see that we have no power in ourselves. And we see that we need help. And so the loving God, the God of all the earth, has been continually over time sending prophets reminding you that you need to be in connection with him the word of god says that he he spoke in the in, in the past through many prophets and through many ways and this is where I, I i stand beside my muslim friends is that yes god does speak he speaks through creation 
He says that there's something that created all things. And so it makes no logical sense to be an atheist or an agnostic. Because we can see very clearly from the things that are made that there is a creator. And it testifies that there is truth in the idea of a God. Whether you call him God or Jehovah or Allah or whatever. I'm not going to reason with you or, or fight with That's you okay, right sure. now about that. All I want you to understand is that you can acknowledge that there is something beyond you. And that's why, as we walk through this journey of life, we seek after help. We seek after new uh, uh, teaching and education from an outside source. This is a reminder that we are not here alone. There is a God, and this God continually, continuously is showing His love, is reaching out to us, who's trying to bring us back to the very source of life that we're losing. Every day that we live, we start to deteriorate and die. Every day, we get stronger, but we also lose strength at the same time. We grow, but we decrease. Someone said to me that the longer that I live, the less I know. The more that I learn, the less I know. Because there's a world of wisdom and knowledge. That's not within our hands alone. In fact, it's in the hands of Almighty God. And this God is showing His knowledge, showing His, etern his, his eternal being through the things that you can see through creation. He's revealing His glory. He's revealing His word. He's revealing His wisdom. It's right before your eyes. So I stand with you, whoever you are, ye that yes, there is a God. But can't you see by the things that are created that this God is revealing Himself? This God is showing that He's real, He's speaking. Even through inanimate things, He's speaking. Even through creation, He's speaking. But I'm here to tell you today that God is more than an inanimate being. He's more than creation. If you can say today that He's been speaking through the prophets, I would say you're right. God has spoken through the prophets of old. He's given so many scriptural evidence and scriptural awareness of His truth, His majesty, how His word is superior than our wisdom, than our sciences. Sometimes God through His word reveals things that no man would know at that era. And so some of you as Muslims today are saying, look at the Quran, it has scientific evidence and scientific discoveries. Well, let's say that that's true. I'm here to tell you today that all knowledge and all wisdom comes from the Lord. Amen. And so what you can at least acknowledge is God is revealing that He's real. God is revealing that He wants to be in a relationship with you. And all you have to do is ask why. Why would the Almighty God want to show you scientific proofs? Why would the Almighty God want to connect with you and be in a relationship with you? I'll tell you why. Because He loves you. And the only book, the only revelation that makes it clear that God loves you is the Injil, the Bible. The Bible clearly demonstrates that God loves you. He loves you so much, so much, that He's sending prophets to you. He's sending messengers to you. This is the point. And why? Because you are made in His image. You are His sons and daughters that have gone astray. You've disconnected from the Almighty God, the one and true living God who created us all. You've divided and you've made devices of your own and distorted the messages of God. Distorted the teachings that He loves you. Distorted the idea that there He's making a way for you to reconnect back with Him and be forgiven. You've distorted it. By your own means, by denying the revelations that God has so dearly entrusted to His people. I'm here to tell you today that creation continues to reveal the majesty of God. People continue to reveal the presence of God. But as you can see from creation, even from the food that we're eating today, it's not what God intended. We corrupt our food. 
we genetically modify things and 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 we put uh we put preservatives and additives and things trying to to make it suitable or marketable or more profitable for us but we lose out we lose out on the nutrients and the vitamins that god wanted you to have because god wants you to live and so in in our own wisdom we've made ourselves fools in our own desire to to show ourselves as gods we found ourselves as just dust and that's why we die and that's why that's why we have division that's why we have hurt and pain that's why we have the problems in this world it's not because of god it's because we have distanced ourselves from god god wants you to live but we decided to live outside of god and even people today have religions religions that say you know what god doesn't want to dwell within me i can get to god by myself but i'm here to tell you today no one can get to god without god no one can live without god nobody can be forgiven or enter into paradise without god that's why God is upset and the wrath of God is revealed against all mankind today is because we have devised our own pathway to God. We have devised our own religions. We have devised our own prophets, our own teachings, and we found ourselves in error. We found ourselves with disappointing, disillusioned thoughts and ideas within our hearts think about the man who says i believe in prophet muhammad i'm following his way well that's wonderful you have all right to follow the pathway of islam and the prophet muhammad you can do this we live in a free world in a free country and i respect anybody that does whatever they want but I'm here to tell you today that the moment we place ourselves on a pathway to reconnect our, ourselves with God without the life-giving power of God, all we're going to be left with is disillusionment. We're not going to know whether or not we're going to be connected with God. Why? Because we know the problem between us and God still exists. The problem is our sin. The problem we've seen all the way from Adam and Eve. Why were they cast out of paradise many years ago? I'm going to tell you why. Because they said, I'm going to be like God. I'm going to do things my way. They were made in the image of God. But what proved they were not God was that death came upon them. They were cast away. They were thrown away from the presence of God. And God said, if you are really God, then be God. If you think you can get yourself back into paradise by your own ways, by, by praying many times a day or by doing what you think you can do, then let me see you get to paradise. And I'm here to tell you today that every person that has ever followed a religion that does not accept Jesus Christ, they have no assurance that they're going to be in paradise. Why? Because God has declared it that without his son, you have no life. Without Jesus, without God plugging or helping you plug back into himself, without the Holy Spirit, without redemption, all you have is death. All you have is death. We've devised our own ways. We've developed our own religions. We've developed our own mindsets. We've gone astray. And it's left us with uncertainty. It's left us alone. It's left us with death. They say that Sharia law is the ideal law. But every Sharia law country that I know has many, if not most, of the people desiring to come to Christian lands. Why? If it was so great, why doesn't it give you the peace? Why doesn't it give you the joy? Why doesn't it offer you the assurance of salvation? I'm here to tell you today that even in the Old Testament of the scriptures, we see that God gave a law that was redemptive. God gave a law that was redemptive within God's very own law. He said there was a sacrifice made for sinners. And it pointed to the ultimate sacrifice. It pointed to Jesus. 
And that's why you're looking towards Jesus. That's why I'm revealing what the prophets have shown you for times past. The prophets were revealing one truth that God desires to have a relationship with you. And without God's life, you will have no life. Without God's redemption, you have no redemption. Without God's righteousness, you can't get yourself back into paradise. That's why Adam and Eve were cast down. They could never get back up without God's mercy. There is no person under the planet, under my voice, on this planet, that can walk back into heaven and say, God, I deserve to be in paradise. Why? Because we have fallen short of the glory of God because of our sin. This is the message. The message is all have sinned. Everyone has sinned. The Muslim has sinned. The Christian has sinned. Every human being has sinned. And because of our sin, we're separated from God. Just like Adam and Eve. What was their sin? A very tiny disobedience towards God's law. One small thing separated Adam and Eve from paradise. One small thing. And if Adam and Eve were separated from God by one little small thing, what makes you think you can get back into God's paradise by your many good deeds? My friends, your righteousness is as filthy rags before God. Your righteousness, it doesn't matter. I can pray 10 times a day towards Mecca and still I'm unrighteous before the Lord. I could give to the poor as a Christian, but it doesn't matter how much I give towards the poor, I'm still unrighteous before the Lord and unworthy. I could be kind to every neighbor that I live by. I could knock on everybody's door, but no matter how much I give, no matter how much love I show, I'm still unrighteous before God. The gospel of God is this, that there are none righteous, but somebody that was righteous came and dwelt among us. Someone who was righteous and who is the Son of God, who is the Word of God, and proved it by his very own character, by the very prophets himself, themselves, by the very resurrection of the dead. This man, Jesus Christ, this man was worthy, and this man is revealing the forgiving nature of God. You see, in order for us to get to God, we need the revelation of God. Jesus Christ is the revelation of God. God is more than a word, my friends. He's a person, and that's why the only true revelation of God, the one that has been revealed, that reveals the personhood of God, is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who is the true Word of God. Everything came before, that came before Jesus was only a shadow of the reality. In fact, before the queen or before the king walks, he always has a trumpeter. He always has someone to announce his coming. And don't you notice, isn't it ironic today? That there's one prophet who's, which has three religions announcing his coming? I don't know any other prophet like that. The prophet Isaiah never had three major religions, the whole world, announcing his coming. Moses never had three major religions announcing his coming. Muhammad never had three major religions announcing his coming. But you know who's coming? You know who's going to destroy the Dajjal? You know, I've, I have never... Two major religions say that Jesus rose from the dead. He's not in the grave. And every fact must be established by two or three witnesses. So one thing we can all agree on as religious people is Jesus is not in the grave. Amen. One thing we can all agree on, whether Jew, Muslim, or Christian, is that Jesus is coming again. Amen. One thing we can all agree on is that the Messiah is the hope of all mankind. Amen. Why the Messiah? Why Jesus? What made him so unique? Well, I'll leave you to think about that. But look at his life for one moment. Without getting into controversy, I'm not here to shame anybody. I'm not here to put anybody down. I don't, you know, everyone has a journey they have to walk on. I love my Muslim brothers and sisters. I love my Christian and my Jehovah Witness. Whoever you are, I love people from the LGBT community. I'm here to tell you that there's something about Jesus. There's something about Jesus that would, that would forever 
have witnesses attesting to his glory. Witnesses attesting to his coming. He's the only one that can destroy the works of the Dajjal, the Antichrist. The one who, who's going to bring all the evil in the world. And I'm here to tell you today, the reason why Jesus can do it is because God can do it. And the reason why Jesus is doing it on behalf of the Father is because he's the Son of the living God. Amen. The Son of God reveals the glory of his Father. It's like any child reveals the glory of their parents. I'm here to tell you today that I'm just like my parents. I'm just like my parents. My father is Irish Canadian, my mother is Jamaican. And I have a mixture of two. I wouldn't say I'm 50-50, I wouldn't say I'm half cast. I would say I'm 100-100. Because you can't, you can't divide my father and divide my mother and say, here you go. DNA is more complex than that. It just fuses in and I become a full person. And I'm trying to tell you today that Jesus Christ, he didn't have an earthly father. Two major witnesses, Islam and Christianity, say that Jesus was born, but without an earthly father. So what that means, no matter which way you want to spin it, if you want to say he was a miracle of God, I will say I serve a miracle working God. Amen. My God is a wonder. Amen. My God is a miracle. Amen. Because he is a miracle working God. Listen, the miracle of Jesus' birth shows you that he was a miraculous child. He was distinct and different from every other person. Jesus Christ, the reason why he's different from Adam, because Adam had no power to overcome sin. But Jesus Christ overcame sin and the grave. And he has, when he comes, a name written on his thigh saying, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. Because he proved. Listen, you can't. Listen, you know how I know that Jesus is the Savior? Because he proved himself. You know how I know that he's the greatest prophet? Because by every co book that was ever written about Jesus, whether the, whether, the, whether the Quran or the Bible, Jesus was the only one that never sinned. Jesus was the only one that was taken up to the throne of God. Jesus is the only one that was tempted in every way and yet without sin. Only Jesus. Why? Because he proved himself to be whom he claimed he was. Now you might say, well, who's the leader of all humanity? Well, somebody's got to lead. Somebody's got to lead. Either I lead or you lead. Now maybe I should be the leader of... Maybe I should be the next king of England. Would you like me to be the king? <laughs> or maybe you should be the queen of England. Maybe you should be. You're, you look good looking, maybe you should be the queen. Elizabeth. Or maybe, I don't know, who's the prime minister, uh, prime minister today? Some lady? What's her name? What's her name? Theresa May. Theresa May. Maybe she should be the continued prime minister. I don't know if she's that good. Who should be the leader of all humanity? You know, I, I heard that in Islam, um, there, in order for a fatwa to be issued, there needs to be some agreement amongst some community or there needs to be some leader and, and there's going to be a caliphate one day and, and, and that's what ISIS is all developed on. They're, they're trying to establish some caliphate. There needs to be a leader. Who's going to lead? Well, I hear from Islamic sources, and correct me if I'm wrong, that, that one day uh, Jesus is going to come back and he's going to lead uh, 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 in, in a prayer or Muhammad's going to lead in a prayer. So what you're telling me is that there's going to be a leader of all humanity. One day there's going to be a good leader that's going to rule the nations and bring everybody towards one God. To the laws of God. Now who would be the most qualified leader to lead all of humanity? It's not me. Don't, don't put me as the leader. I will fail. I'm a wonderful guy. I probably buy you a coffee if you need one. But I'm not the right guy to lead all of humanity. I made too many flaws to be considered the right guy to lead all people. Who would it be? Martin Luther King Jr. He, he was a leader. He was a great guy. He, he told people that, you know, it's not by, uh, you know, uh, your color of your skin. You should judge a person by the content of your character. Wonderful guy. But I heard stories. He had a mistress on the side. I heard all these little. So I, I don't know if he's the right guy. 
And he ended up getting shot. He didn't rise from the dead, so he's dead. <laughs> I don't think he's the greatest guy. I mean, I'm sure he would acknowledge he's a sinner. Mother Teresa, people say she was good. I don't know if it's true. She helped the poor in Calcutta. Wonderful lady. But I think she had a little anger problem from what I learned at times. And I saw a movie, she was a little feisty lady at times. Wonderful lady, I'm not discrediting her. But I don't think she would be the greatest world leader that has ever lived. Who's the greatest? Now some people emulate their life after the Prophet Muhammad. I'm not here to disgrace that. There's a lot of wonderful things that he's done. I don't agree with everything about the Prophet of Muhammad. He told people to believe in God. I think that's great. Anybody that tells anybody to believe in God, is a, that's a good thing to do. I stand with you. Continue to believe in God. But was he the ultimate final source and standard for all humanity? Is he the guy that should lead all of humanity as a Christian? I think no. I think he was flawless. He, in his own words, said he wasn't flawless. According to the Quran, he wasn't flawless. In fact, so many people, as I read the Quran myself, they weren't flawless. They made mistakes. David, Ibrahim, all the prophets made sins, errors. And so he was like, well, show me what the error is. And I said, well, I'll show you. So in chapter 47 and 19, 48 and 2, these are two clear verses that Muhammad sinned, and as well as the Ummah, every person has sinned. In fact, one of the Hadiths says that, that, that every human being that was born has sinned. This is a fact. And anybody that says you haven't sinned is a liar. All of us have sinned. The Bible even says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every person, except one. According to the Quran, according to the Bible, there's only one person that has never sinned, only one person that seemed to be taken up by God and is seated in such a glorious state and is coming back again to kill the very uh, manifestation of Satan himself. And that's Jesus. Now, if I was going to pick the final leader, the best leader for all of humanity, for all of life, and, and to base it upon their ethics, their character, what they've done, what they've proven, what they've said, the only person, and I'm not discri dis dis discriminating against anybody, I'm not putting anybody down, but there's only one person that hasn't sinned, it's Jesus, that makes him a perfect leader. There's only one person that overcame life's greatest problem, which is death. That's Jesus. There's only one person that, that Allah or God, whoever you want to say, is, was worthy and is worthy to destroy the manifestation of Satan, the Antichrist with the job. That's Jesus. So we have somebody that's going to destroy evil, Jesus. The one who hasn't sinned means a perfect leader, that's Jesus. A person that overcame humanity's biggest problem this is jesus now these are all indisputable facts according to the quran according to the bible jesus never sinned two witnesses say the same thing jesus the Bi the quran and the bible says jesus never sinned there's not one verse in the quran where it says jesus sinned so we can we can we can say clearly without getting into religious war that jesus was sinless but we can't say the same thing about Muhammad. We can't say the same thing about Buddha. And we can't say the same thing about any other figure in history. So number one, the best human leader has to be a perfect leader. Or at least the most perfect leader. And that perfect leader has proven himself by their attributes. And that's Jesus. Based on the Quran and the Bible. According to the Quran and the Bible... Jesus is not dead in the grave. Now we can dispute about whether or not he died and rose again or he just was taken up by God. I'm not going to get into that dispute right now, but all I know is something was so special about Jesus that God could not leave him on the cross or God could not leave him in the grave. What was it? I'm going to tell you what it was. If he wasn't, if he had no sin, all that means is death could not hold him down. The only thing that keeps us separated from God is our sin. And because Jesus had no sin, God had to take him to be in heaven. Whether he died on the cross or not, he could not be held down. The reason why we die is because of sin. And the reason why Jesus 
did not die, or rather that he rose again, is because he has none. My friends, that's amazing. The greatest leader would be the greatest warrior. And I'm not talking about telling his, his, his servants to go fight a holy jihad. That's not what I'm talking about. Because Jesus taught, whoever lives by the sword dies by the sword. God doesn't need the sword to finish his mission. In fact, we see in the Old Testament that a lot of missions were carried out with the sword. But look what happened. Nobody could fulfill God's mission with the sword. How long has Islam been around? 1,400 years. How successful is it? Who rules the world today? Islam or the Jews and the Gentiles? Listen to me. Islam spread all throughout North Africa and into the Middle East. Wow. But I'm here to tell you today, even after 1,400 years, it's the Christian nations and the Jewish nations that are still ruling the world. And I'm going to tell you why. Because the Bible predicted that one day the people of God would rule. Now listen, it also predicted that there's a coming of tough times. When those who feel, those that people will feel that killing Christians is doing God a favor. Who is it that would kill the messengers of love and forgiveness? Who is it that would think that anyone who converts to Christianity is worthy of death? I'm going to leave you to, to think about that. It's not Christianity. It's not Judaism. So what is it? What religion is it? What philosophy would want to kill Christians? Kill those who convert to Christianity? You know and I know and I won't even mention it. The point is, is that death is a curse. And Jesus is the only one that conquered death. So based upon those three points, we can deduce that Jesus would be the best leader of all humanity. I, don't, I can have my eyes blindfolded. And if someone were to describe Jesus and describe any other leader, and if you weren't biased, you would pick Jesus and so would I. And so regardless of what you feel, put your feelings aside and use your logic. Jesus Christ is worthy to be considered the one who represents God to the fullest or at least to the most fullest in creation so if he represents God that means he's revealing God and if all of us reveal God but we've fallen short and Jesus Christ reveals God but he hasn't re fallen short that means he's worthy to be called the son of God because he reveals God fully and that's why the Bible says he's the image of the invisible God the fullness of God dwelt within him bodily my friend these are indisputable facts about Jesus. Indisputable. Indisputable facts. And if what I'm saying is true, and if what I'm saying has two witnesses, the Quran and the Bible, then why not accept Jesus? Why not accept his claims? Why not embrace him today and say, Jesus, I think the other prophets were wonderful, but they all failed. But you didn't fail. You're coming again to destroy the evil one. And that's maybe a third point I'm just going to reiterate again. The greatest leader of humanity would be a warrior. And the warrior, the warrior is the one who destroys the enemy. If in the Quran and in the Islamic tradition, Jesus Christ is going to destroy the greatest enemy that has ever plagued mankind. I would say he's worthy to be knighted at least the crown as the leader. Wouldn't you think so? In fact, we watch so many movies. Brother Alex, we watch so many movies on, 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 on television about the man. You know that the story where the guy, if you could kill the dragon, the one who could kill the dragon would, would become the prince or become the king and, and he would have the daughter? We have all these movies about the one who's the strongest warrior will have the greatest position. In fact, wars in history also promise people. Look at the Bible. Those who would fight the giant or destroy. Look what happened with Saul and David. Whoever would fight uh, Goliath, you know, could have my daughter and would live in the palace. Would have the greatest position. Look what happened with Mordecai and Esther and all these people, even people in Islamic tradition. Those who would destroy the, war, uh, the greatest enemy. 
they would get a high position. But guess what? According to the Quran and the Bible, Jesus will destroy the greatest enemy. Jesus is coming to kill the Dajjal. Only Jesus. And that means Jesus must be very powerful. Amen. That means Jesus Christ must have, a, will have a ranking that is higher than any person in history. So listen, you can call it what you want. But Christians call that the Son of God. You know why we call it the Son of God? Because if anyone, if anyone can reflect God perfectly, if anyone can, can, can be the greatest leader over mankind, in fact, if you read the Quran, when God created Adam and Eve, the Bible says that God was going to create a vice regent. You know what a vice regent means? And I looked it up. A vice regent is someone that stands in the place of God, someone who represents God. And Adam was made to represent God. But did he represent God? No. He failed. Adam failed. He, he was supposed to represent God, but he failed. And Moses was supposed to represent God, but he failed. Every leader was supposed to represent, every person was supposed to represent God, but they failed. We are all reflections of God's glory, but we have failed to reveal God's glory. You know what it's like? It's like we've been short-circuited. We've been short-circuited in our own life because of sin. Sin is the short circuit of God's life, but Jesus has no short circuit. Jesus has no short circuit in his life. In the Quran, I think it's in Surah chapter 3, it says Adam was created to be the vice regent of God, and he told, and God told all the angels to bow down to Adam. That's weird. Why would God tell all of creation, all of the angels, the heavenly hosts, to bow down to Adam? Well, some people say, well, it's a sign of respect. Okay, so who are the Bowing down, you know, Muslims are taught to bow down to God. Why would God tell anyone to bow down to Adam? Maybe it's a sign of honor. I know in some traditions, you go to Ethiopia, right? All right. You, 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 you bow. I know in Chinese culture, you bow to your elders. I know that there's in, in Middle Eastern countries, you may, maybe you don't bow, but there's a respect for your elders. There's always a respect for those who come first. Now, Adam came first. So maybe, maybe all of creation was, God was telling all of creation to give respect to Adam by bowing. Okay, well, whatever the reason is, Adam had the privileged position to represent God that all of creation had to bow, had to respect Adam. But guess what Adam did? Adam failed and was cast out of heaven. But there's one, there's one who was brought back to heaven. There's one who even death and sin couldn't hold down. Adam was thrust from heaven, but Jesus was brought to heaven. That should tell you enough. These are indisputable facts of the Quran and the Bible. That Jesus now has the most privileged and honored position. And so if God would tell the angels to bow to Adam, I'm sure he's telling the angels to bow to Jesus. Maybe it's because of respect. Maybe it's because of position. But I know that Jesus has a position that no other man has. It's the position of leadership. It's the position of authority. It's the position of a warrior, salvation. It's the position of representing God. It's the position of the word. We can say very clearly from scripture that Jesus is the word of God, who was God. It is God. He's the I am that I am. Because no one can do and say what Jesus said. No one can do what Jesus could do. Unless he was unique. Unless there was something about Jesus that no other creation could even comprehend. 
I'm here to tell you today, my friends, that Jesus said he had glory with the Father from times past. I'm here to tell you today that in the book of Revelations, all of the angels and the saints were around the throne and there was a book that no one could open. And all of creation was mourning. Who would open the book? Who would bring the final judgment? And there was only one that walked before the throne, the Lamb of God, who was slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. He came and opened the book. Amen. And the judgment was done and given upon humanity. This is the final judgment. And that's why Jesus Christ sent his disciples to declare the final judgment that's coming on the land. That if you do not receive Jesus as the Son of God, if you do not receive his salvation, if you do not receive the cross, my friends, the judgment and the wrath of God will abide on you because that's the very thing that separates you from God is your sin. Your sin separates you from God and God's Son, Jesus Christ, the only one that died, was buried, and rose again for you is the only one that can grant you the mercy of God because He's the leader. The leader has the authority of God to dispense the mercy of God. The leader is the one who makes the final decisions on behalf of all humanity. Adam once had that position, but he failed. You once had the authority of God, but you failed. But Jesus Christ never failed. And so in, for in order for you to understand the true power of God, you need to come to the one who reveals God, and that's Jesus Christ. In order for you to know the invisible God, you need to come to the leader that God ordained on his behalf. And that is the Son of God, Jesus Christ. I hope that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Because if you deny the Son, you deny life. Whoever has the Son has life. And whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. But the wrath of God abides on you. This is the real message. This is the message of truth. The message where God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. People are arguing about so many things but all it takes is someone with honesty to ask themselves simple questions. People are debating about Trinity or not Trinity. Listen, we don't see all these arguments within the book of Acts or in the Bible. We know there's one God. And this one God is revealing his truth, revealing his salvation, revealing his mercy in the person of Jesus. And that's why you need to receive Jesus. All the other stuff you can make sense of in your own time. But one thing you need to contend with today is the person of Jesus. Jesus is the leader, the authority, and the judge. Amen. Who is it that judges? It's God. But who is it that judges on God's behalf? It's Jesus. Who is it that gives mercy? It's God. But who is it that dispenses mercy on behalf of God? It's Jesus. Who is it that's the authority, the king of all the earth? It's God. But who is it that manifests the authority and the leadership of all the earth? It's Jesus. Amen. Who is it that's full of glory? It's God. But who is it that manifests the glory of God better than any other person fully? It's Jesus. Amen. So my friends, figure this out. It's a mystery. People have been debating for 2,000 years how to explain this wonderful truth. But it's been explained today. And there are none. No person will be without an excuse today. There is no offense. There is no reason to run. All you need to do today is believe. Believe that God loves you. Believe that God desires to be in a relationship with you. Believe that there is someone who came. It is God revealed in the person 
of Jesus Christ. You can trust in him today, whoever you are. Birmingham, don't trust in an uncertain hope. Don't trust in a pathway that leads you to the grave. Don't trust in a, a leader that had no power to resurrect himself. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. And he proved it by raising Lazarus. He proved it by raising himself. He proved it over and over by the miracles that he did, that he has the power to take away and to give life. The only one that has that power is God. And the only one that revealed that power is Jesus. And the only ones that can walk in that power are those to whom Jesus grants that power. Because those who have trusted in Jesus are reconnected back with God through the sacrifice of his son. And that's why miracles are available today in the name of Jesus. That's why people today are being delivered from demons. That's why people today are being raised from the dead. It's because the life-giving power of God has been revealed and given back to humanity to those who trust in His Son, Jesus. We now can be reconnected and true children and sons of God. God bless you, brother. God bless you. That's why we're bold. The people that are performing miracles today are the believers in Jesus. Not because we're great, it's because the God that we serve is great and He lives within us. And I'm here to pray for any person, whoever you are. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you if you need prayer. If you'd like to re be reconnected with God. Hallelujah. Father. Hallelujah. This lady, Lord God, has revealed a need in her life. And I pray right now in the name of Jesus that your life-giving power would be given to her. The sickness in her body would be removed right now. I speak to every sickness, every infirmity right now in the name of Jesus. To leave her body. Uproot yourself and go right now. In Jesus' name, I break every curse. Every lie and every voice spoken against her health. I uproot that and I curse that right now in Jesus' name. And I speak life and healing for her marrow, for her bones, in her mind, her soul, and her being. I pray positive results. That when she goes to the doctor and gets checked again, that they would say a miracle has been done. Yes, Take away the pain. I speak against every form of pain right now. Yes, God. In her womb, in her body, in her back, in her legs, in her mind, in her shoulders right now in the name of Jesus. Right now in Jesus' name. Let your healing power in the name of Jesus flow through her body. I speak wellness and healing over you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Go, go to the doctor, sister. I did feel the pain and everything just... Serious? No, really, honestly. I still feel pain in my leg. But um, Jesus said, not today, but from before, because I'm a born-again Christian. He said that I'm healing you slowly because you flitter and flutter and your mind doesn't settle you might come away from me so you've got to stay in bed and learn it's a way to get me to sit and learn about jesus now wait a second so did anything happen just now and be honest i'm not here to being honest i can't i'm not we're not allowed to lie are we david I'm... so what what is it that you feel in my lower lumbar region it feels like it's i can't feel the pain and in my, in, in my hips because I've got all over pain, fibromyalgia, ME, autoimmune disease, thyroid and everything. But I feel... Well, let, let me pray for your legs. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pray, I believe. Father, you are the God that heals the legs. You're the God that made legs, Lord God. And Father, Lord, she's honest, Lord. She said, Lord, she, she feels a deliverance of some pain, but not the whole thing, Lord God. And I pray in the name of Jesus the pain in the legs the fibromyalgia 
all of that would be uprooted and gone right now in the name of Jesus. Right now. In Jesus' name. I speak to that pain. Be gone. Be gone right now. Be gone right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Pain, I uproot you right now in Jesus' name. You are the healer, and I declare your healing right now by his authority. By his stripes, you are healed. Be uprooted right now in the name of Jesus. Spirits of affliction, go right now. Ligaments be realigned, cells come back to order right now in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Hey Amen. Be honest. Just tell me how you feel. Uh, it's okay. I'm not here to fluff games. It's okay. No, honestly. Yeah, yeah, you can feel it. You did one leg and the other leg was like, whoa, what about me? <laughs> no, it does. It does feel better. Yeah, yeah. Can I have your email address? Of course you can. So you're saying you feel better. I'm not here to fluff no game. But I'm not here to get any accolades because I know I'm a human being. He's the God of healing. Tell me honestly how you feel. I do. I do feel lighter. It does feel better. So you've been with Jesus for how long now? 22 years. So I've been with Jesus for two years, and because you've got, like, you're like an elder, so you know you've got the you channel in the energy of the Holy Spirit. So you feel a little better right now. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, praise, praise the Lord. God. Give God some praise. praise God. It's not me. All the glory to the Lord. Amen. You, amen. You got. You want to accept Jesus? Amen. Amen. Would you? You truly want to accept Jesus? Why do you want to accept Jesus? Because of my Bible and just how my life has been. It hasn't been the best of lives, but wow. a deep try. Amen. Why don't you close your eyes right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let your fire, Lord, come upon him right now in the name of Jesus as he has desired, Lord God, to trust in you. I thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit. Reconnect him back with you by the blood. I pour the blood of Jesus Christ over his life right now. In Jesus' name. Jesus name cover him right now send your mighty angels Lord to give him a true uh, a desire for you bring him to repentance right now it's a miracle from you right now in Jesus name that's it that's it in Jesus name say this prayer with me right now say dear Lord Jesus I believe that you died on the cross for me I have sinned I have sinned and I repent of my sins. And I repent of my sins. I break covenant with the enemy. I break covenant with the enemy. I ask you to cleanse my heart. I ask you to cleanse my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. My Lord and Savior. You said you would forgive me if I believe. You said you'd forgive me if I believe. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you died for me. And I accept you. And I accept you. I receive your forgiveness. Receive your forgiveness. I thank you. Thank you. That you would forgive me. That you forgive me. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. Now listen, I, I want to I want to keep in touch with you. Uh, I'm going to give you a card and something to remind you of the truth of what you just did. You've accepted the only salvation to mankind. It's Jesus Christ. I want you to send that uh, text to me, brother, yeah. on that number, okay? And uh, there's some believers here that are from this area. Oh, God bless you, brother. Amen. Amen. God bless you, brother. There's some believers from here that will keep you, keep you in the loop here. Amen. Is there anybody Amen. else here? Yes, you can. Here, text. Amen. This is my number here in here, okay? Just text me. Amen. Is there anybody else here that needs prayer? You know, it's amazing because God's reconnected. God bless you. Okay. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else here that, that needs prayer? Anybody? What, maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's a, a disease. Maybe it's a, a relationship. You need prayer. What, what's the prayer for? Just say hello to everybody. God bless you and one yeah, love. Yeah, please, please. God bless you, but that's not a prayer. Just respect what I'm saying. 
It's just that's not funny, but it's thank you. Anybody need prayer? Uh, any, any anything? Is there a need for prayer? Is there a need for prayer? What? Job? No, yeah, with my job and everything with the problems in my job. So what's going on with your job? Boy, easy. I'm always busy, so I'm, not, I'm never really the time to work. Sorry, so the accent is different. Sorry, say that again. But uh, when I'm at work, you know, I've got all the bad vibes and, and all that around me. And really, I ain't got time to look up to Jesus. Wait, okay, so it's distracting you from Jesus. Okay, distraction. There's a few reasons for distraction. One, the things we're putting in our lives. Two, the people that we put in our lives. And, and the... And, uh, um, the, the some routines that we have like going to church spending time with other believers do you have a church that you go to regularly uh, i'm from Warsaw, so yeah okay so you do go to church um are you reading the bible yeah okay so you are reading the bible so it's just your job um is it possible that maybe the job that you're doing maybe god wants you somewhere else I, i'm not sure Probably, yeah. I want you to pray about that. Okay, I'm going to pray for you that God gives you wisdom. Father, in the name of Jesus, guide my brother. Lord God, you, you want us to walk in peace. Now, sometimes, oh God, you put us into situations, oh God, for our growth. Lord God, and sometimes you're leading us somewhere else. But I pray, Lord God, that this man would feel and know the peace that he needs to know to walk with you. If there's any habits in his life, break it. If there's any decisions that he needs to make, have him to make it. Give him the wisdom right now in the name of Jesus. Touch his heart, Lord God, and show him your mercy. Show him your power in the mighty name of Jesus. And give him, Lord God, uh, the guidance he needs in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, brother. God bless you, man. Have you accepted Jesus? You've accepted Jesus? Amen. Amen. Anybody need prayer today? You, you, have, you need prayer. What, what can I pray for you about today? Lord, God is doing some mighty things today. Praise God. Anybody else need some prayer? Listen, this is your time. God is here. Not it's it's not by my might, by my power, but it's by His Spirit. Well, 
or anything? Anything you're well, doing? Well, I don't know if I'm the first. I worship and praise in my house. Last time. Probably, probably, probably as you're upsetting the spirits there. That's what's probably going to happen. It's not legal. 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 That's why they're being upset. Being upset but so, you see, they have, if they're upset and offended by talking about God, that's where they have to preach. Jesus is the enemy of the And I think they are really fighting. Well, let's, let's, that's, that's probably what it is. So let's pray to the one that they get saved. Or to the God to better. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, this family, Lord God, is opposed to the things of God. They're opposed to the praise. They're opposed to the Spirit of God. But Lord God, we ask that you are rested right now in the Spirit. Lord God, to bring them to the place of surrender right now in Jesus' name. Bring them to you. Knock on the door of their heart. Let the witness of God witness in their spirit right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, if they continue to deny you, just like many of the Pharisees did, open up a door, a better place for this lady. A place, oh God, sometimes it, 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 it might look like one door closed, but there's, it, it, it's never a closed door with you. You are the God that opens the doors and no man can shut. Shuts doors that no one can open. So Lord, bless this woman as she trusts in Jesus Christ. Open up all the right doors for her. Bring salvation to that home. Jesus. God bless everyone's job in this. It's the Lord. And hallelujah. Anybody else need prayer? God, God is just ministering. This is ministry time. Amen. Anyway, you said certain things about Islam. Oh, it's just because everybody's listening, so it's kind of hard. You said certain things about Islam earlier. And certain things they were saying that you were saying about Islam that wasn't here. And I just wanted to ask you a question. Well, what do you know about Islam? Because being as you touched on the issue, yeah. you should have some understanding of, of, of uh, uh, Islam. And so I just wanted to know what, what understanding you have of that religion. Because certain things you said was incorrect. What was it? Uh, from, I have a pretty yeah. I have a pretty good understanding of Islam. I've been introduced to Islam about 22 years ago. It was uh, other than Christianity. Uh, right after I accepted Jesus Christ, I uh, bumped into some Muslims in my neighborhood. Went to the masjid for many years and read the Quran thoroughly a few times. And um, so I, I mean, I, I'm not a Hafiz. I, I you know, I, I, I still don't know Arabic. I don't, I'm not sure if you did. Do you know Arabic? What, one of the things, one of the you know things Arabic? Your, your colleagues were saying was like um, uh, there were uh, Muslims burning down Christian churches in Nigeria. That happens, yeah. It's uh, true. Yeah, well, it may be true, but my, my question was what has, what has that got to do with Islam? Well, I think it's, you know, people do bad things. And I'm not saying, I personally don't think every Muslim is bad. I think there's wonderful Muslim people that, that wouldn't burn down anything. Uh, I'm not talking about the Muslims, I'm talking about Islam. I think. I, I think it, yeah, it, it all depends on y your reading of the Quran because there are some things in the Quran that that give license to um, taking over lands in the name of Islam and forcing people to. No, 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 I'm, 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 not, I'm not here to I'm not no no he was asking he was asking me a question I'm not here to yeah. insult you brother yeah. I'm not here I, I've seen you listening for quite some time I know I know I'm Muslim I respect I'm proud you of it. yeah I'm Muslim I'm proud of it don't insult Quran or Muhammad my friend, my friend. You know, no, nobody no, nobody no, did it's bad news my, my brother friend, my friend. okay it's bad news for my, you my friend, my friend. okay can I, can I ask you something can I there are Muslim people. okay I don't Okay, nobody was in so Christian and you just go, oh, Jesus love you. What the fuck you talking about? Okay, so wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second, wait, wait a second. You know, with all due respect, me hungry. Wait, wait, with what? With all due respect, no. First of all, nobody insulted you, but you just insulted Christianity. You just said what I said. My beliefs. No, Muhammad is a sinner. Muhammad is not sinner. 
no, no, he no. never made any mistakes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, no, I did. I, no, he did. Yeah, he made mistakes. Yeah, he made mistakes. No, he no, said that no, himself. No, no. no. Okay. He is a prophet, but he made mistakes like other prophets did too. That that doesn't mean that I'm insulting you. I'm just saying a fact. Nobody's insulting you. You insult me because I'm Muslim. One hundred percent. But why are you angry? Nobody's insulting you. Because he made me angry. You just insulted Christianity. What did I what did I say that was insulting to you? I heard you before. Muhammad is a sinner. The Quran everyone is a sinner. Yep. I never said the Quran was no good. That's not what I said. Muhammad and Quran down. No, I said the I said the Quran attests to Jesus. Nobody insult insulted you. Nobody insulted you. If you pure Christian, it should be equal. Everybody is equal. You know what I mean? I think everybody is equal, and we all have we all have different but choices. But you put Quran down. No, no, no. I actually said the. You oh, put no, Muhammad actually, I, down. No, no, that's actually not what I did. You put Jesus up. Okay, I did that's put wrong. Jesus. Okay, hold on, hold on. That's wrong. Can I say something? I actually didn't do what you said, but what I did say today was that the Quran attests that Jesus was sinless. The Quran says that Jesus rose, that is with God today, and he's not in the grave. This is true. And the Quran, or at least Islamic tradition, says that Jesus is coming to kill the Dajjal. The Quran and the Bible say that. And is Jesus coming to kill the Dajjal? The Quran never said that, no. Okay. The tradition of Islam. The, yeah, hold on. Is Jesus coming to kill the Dajjal? Yes or no? the Quran. Yes, I have, I have. Has, is Jesus coming to destroy the Dajjal? Yes or no? You tell me. No. Okay. Is did Jesus is Jesus with God today? Is he in heaven? No. Where is Jesus? You tell me. He's in heaven. You tell me. I did. He's Jesus is in heaven. Is he? How do you uh, how do you know? Because according to the Quran, he was taken up by God, and according to the Bible, he rose from the dead. So he's not in the grave. Was he's you there? Was you there? No, I wasn't there. there. Was you there? So again, no one's here to insult you. I never said anything insulting to you. So, so you know I didn't insult. As a Muslim. No, no, I didn't jump. I didn't. Okay, let's go back to you. You know I wasn't insulting anything. Okay, do you want me to ask? No, no, this wasn't. It's just I wanted to calm him down because I realized that he's an, he's a, he's an elder. He deserves respect. You should, you should come down. You should come down, not me. Okay, sir. Because you got problems. You got a big problem. So what's the problem? My friend, my friend, come, 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 come. I heard you before. I heard you before say Muhammad. Uh, no good. Jesus. I never said Muhammad's very good. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. That's your question. My point was actually a very serious question. You always put Islam down. Okay, I'm not always here. I've only been here for an hour, so it's not true. I was asking you a very serious question just when you jumped into some emotional uh, talk with this guy. But he's going to say that you really like you. So there's no need to go into any detail about it. There were Muslims burning down churches in Nigeria. My question to you was, what has that got to do with Islam? I, I wasn't preaching that, so... Well, no, let me finish. And, and, and you said, you said, well, there are Muslims burning down the church. Was that which I, I agree? There are Muslims burning down churches. There are Christians burning down Muslim churches? Probably, yeah. But my point is, what has that got to do with Islam? Okay, so what I was trying to answer is, first of all, it all depends on how you read certain passages of the Quran. Some people would take that as a license. Some some verses would take that uh, would read certain verses in the Quran as a license to force religion upon others, and that's what you see with ISIS and so forth. So for them, they would say that this is Islam. If they don't embrace Islam, that they're entitled to do that. Some would feel that way. Others would feel that it has nothing to do with Islam. They would say that that was something done in the past because of. Uh, war mindsets and they would say that that's not Islam today so it depends what way you read the Quran if you read it literally and you read it through a certain lens they would give license to force religion upon someone else does that answer your question so you, so you agree uh, that the actions of any individual doesn't necessarily mean it is a religious command that's true 
That's true. No, I, I agree. Not 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 everybody that's a Muslim that acts bad means it's necessarily Islam. Again, it depends on what's the right interpretation of Islam and what's what should be the final standard, right? There was just one more thing that you said with, with this guy here about uh, the Messenger of Allah, uh, Muhammad. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Um, uh, 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 you were saying about uh, sins, that everybody was a sinner. And I just wanted to uh, correct that issue. The, 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 problem, the problem, the problem. The, the, prob the problem that we have sometimes is that we, we tend to speak about people's religion as if we understand uh, uh, the religion we're talking about. And it's very important that we say the right things so people understand and learn the right things. So as far as Islam is concerned, this is the reason why I wanted to know what knowledge you have of Islam because you were saying certain things about Islam and if you don't truly understand Islam or or you don't truly have the understanding of what this religion is all about then you're obviously going to make mistakes in your interpretations of, of, of who Muhammad was and and also uh, what he uh, advised or commanded the Muslims to do so my first question would be to anybody anyone any Christian any person that is not Muslim is well what do you know about Islam Right? Because we've heard a lot of people saying things about Islam, your, yourself included, and yet no one here really knows what Islam is all about. Okay. Why, don't, why don't you tell us what Islam is about then? Because, I mean, since you feel I don't know, why don't you tell me? Well, well Islam, yeah. Is, Islam is first and foremost submission and surrender to the will of uh, Allah. Now, Allah, obviously, some people are not, not comfortable with, the, with uh, the name Allah. Allah is the terminology, the Arabic terminology, that used to describe the Creator. Now, even Christians in Muslim country or Egypt who speak Arabic call him Allah. What does that have to do with Islam, though? First, because this is Islam, first and foremost, Islam. Islam is submission and surrender to the will of Almighty God. Okay? The second pillar of Islam, right, is prayer. Five times daily prayers uh, at fixed period of time. Then you have the fasting, you have the charity, and these are these are uh, the fundamental pillars of Islam. So when we're discussing Islam, the first thing we need to discuss is the issue of the creator of the earth. Is the issue of the creator of the heavens and earth. When we start dwelling, de de uh, delving into issues concerning Muhammad and concerning the actions of Muslims, we get lost because uh, 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 these tend to bring about emotional okay. arguments okay. And, oh, yeah, and, and contradiction in what we're saying property, so property. it's like if I'm arguing about you, uh, Islam uh, that my religion is correct and yours is wrong is you're gonna argue the same point that your religion is correct and mine is wrong okay let's let's just stick to the uh, let me just finish this but point. I am gonna film but, the crowd but, and I'll just skip right over you the okay? fact of the, the fact of the matter is so none of us have addressed the real issue right and the real issue is first and foremost is who do you worship and is that object worthy of it that's the first issue we need to address in christianity and islam okay so can i ask you who do you worship and is he worthy of it well yes he is worthy of it the, the one that i worship is the one that created you and me okay okay the creator so prove that your god is worthy to be worshipped well did he become a savior for you? Here's, 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 your, here's the evidence that he's worthy of worship, right? The fact, the fact of the matter that you're standing here right now, is he not worthy of that your worship? I agree. I have a creator that created me and he's worthy of worship. But what makes your rendition of God worthy of worship? Well, are we talking about two gods? Is there not one God? No, there's only one God, but you're you're making differentiation between my God and your God, right? There's only one creator. Now, he's the one that created you and me. Is that incorrect? No, that's correct. Okay, so why are you asking me questions like you don't understand what I'm saying? Okay, so if you believe in the same creator today, would you like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Well, here's, here's the problem. Who is Jesus? 
Okay, that's not the question. If, if we worship the same God, would you like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Are you saying that Jesus is the creator? It's not the question. If you believe in the same God that I believe in, would you like to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? This is a simple question. And if not, don't worry about what I believe. Just would you like to accept him as your Lord and Savior? Because that's what I believe. So, so what you're saying is that your creator is Jesus. Is that what you're saying? I'm just trying to get an understanding of who you worship. Okay, so we worship something different because you don't understand my Jesus. And, and so it seems like we have a different understanding. So I'm telling you, if you want to know what I believe about Jesus, I believe that he's the revelation of God. That's all, that's all I'm trying to understand, that, that you're, you're, you worship Jesus, all right? Okay, so my, my, my position is, who is he? He's the revelation of the invisible God. He's the one who reveals God fully to all of humanity. And, he, and he's trying to make himself known to you too. You see, that's, that's why I said, if, you know, you said the, the, the creator is worthy of worship. I agree, there's only one God, and this God is trying to reveal himself to you. And he did through Jesus. Okay. Now, is that your opinion or is that a fact? It's in Scripture. Is it your opinion or is it a fact? It's not my opinion. It's in Scripture. It's in God's Word. So is it a fact? It's a fact. Okay. So what evidence you got for that? The Bible. Okay. Where does it say that in the Bible? John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory is of the only begotten of the father full of grace and truth amen now is that opinion or fact it's fact okay who is john he's a disciple of jesus and the evidence the word of god it's written it's recorded it was agreed upon by the ummah of the christians which christians the ones that were with jesus at the time and also those who inherited the message of those who were with him at the time and where's your proof at? Proof is right here. And I'll read it to you. It says right here. It says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't understand it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of the light. That was the true light which lights every man that's coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become the sons of God, or children of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glories of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him in Christ, saying, This was he of whom I spake. He that comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he has declared him. So again, Jesus reveals God. This is what the Bible says. Now back to the original question, because you actually went and jumped. You said that Muhammad didn't commit sins. Well, I'm here, according to Surah chapter uh, Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 8, uh, numbers 335, 339, 407, and 408. The prayer that Muhammad made said, Oh God, I acknowledge and confess before you all my sins. Please forgive them, as no one can forgive sins except you. Forgive my sins, my mistakes, those done intentionally or out of my ignorance, with or without seriousness. Oh God, forgive my sins and my ignorance. Forgive my sins of the past and of the future, which I did openly or secretly. Forgive the wrong I have done, jokingly or seriously. I seek your protection from all evil I have done. Wash away my sins. Cleanse my heart from all the sins as white as a white garment is cleansed from filth, and let there be long distance between me and my sins, as you made the east and west far from each other. So the, so you came here saying I was inaccurate. According to the Islamic tradition, which is what you wanted to talk about, not me, 
Muhammad in his own confession said he sinned. He needs forgiveness. No one prays for forgiveness unless they've committed sins. So, so look, I'm not here to, this is, yeah, go ahead. What sin did Muhammad commit? That's for you to figure out. That's for you to figure out. I'm not, I'm not here to put anybody down, but that's, that's for you to sort out. That's for you to sort out. He himself, look, I don't know what sins he's committed. I don't need to know. He said in his own words, I've sinned, please forgive me. That's all I need. I don't need to go into people's personal lives. The moment, moment someone comes to me, I'm a pastor. Someone comes to me, look, I've sinned. I'm like, look, I don't need, God can forgive you. Would you like to uh, ask forgiveness for your sin? If they say yes, look, they've sinned. They've acknowledged it in their own lips. That's the own witness. Don't need anything more. Yeah, but the thing is, right, Jesus asked for, for the sins of other people as well. Yes. For other people. Even the people that weren't alive. But not for himself. Right? Okay. Now, so, so this is, look, look. The point that I'm making, the point that I'm making is that you says that Muhammad sinned. He said that, not me. Right? Now, where did he sin? What sin did he commit? I know, okay, look, I know, I know, I know he's making, I know, I know, I know that he's making a supplication to his Lord, right, but my point that I'm making is that what sin did he commit, did he steal, did he cheat, did he, did he kill, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. okay, look, I, I already, I already answered that question, I'm not, look, I don't know what sins he's committed, I'm not going to argue about his personal life, but, but one thing I do know, is that he himself said he sinned he himself asked forgiveness and that's all i need as a witness of his own words that he said now look he might be a great person you know he may you know but but there's so many other passages in the quran where other prophets have sinned too it's not just muhammad moses has sinned according to the quran and the bible um uh, it, uh jonah has sinned remember when jonah was disobeying god and they say, Allah has begotten the Son, glory be to you, exalted be he about all according to Quran and has sinned. So no. it's, it's not it's not putting mm -hmm. Muhammad in a special mm -hmm. corner of great sin and, and on other things. And all he himself has himself 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 to He himself, 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 himself has forgiven. The only person that I was saying earlier didn't sin, they didn't need forgiveness of sins, but not in the way that's seated in heaven today is Jesus. That's the only thing I said. I'm here to argue with anybody. Would you like to speak? Would you like to speak? Would you like to speak? I don't know the interpretation, and yet he himself said he sinned. I don't, I don't know what what interpretation do I need on sin. Someone says I sinned. That's not a sin. Someone says I need forgiveness. I don't need forgiveness. I, I don't know. Is there another interpretation? About the meaning sin? No, no. In general, there are a million words. There is no language in the world that has 12 different words. What does that have to do with the word sin? I don't know what 12 million words have to do with that. Let me just say something. You control the mic here. So please don't jump off into different directions. Because people jumping in. Yeah, but you're talking to me. You also jumped in a jersey. He's like, I know, I know, I know. So I just have to explain. The point that I was making, the point, the point that I was making, the reason why I was asking you that question right, is because I wanted to try and get an understanding of what you know about Islam. So this is the point that I'm making because it seems to me that it's re reading uh, uh, um, abstracts out of books and, and, and certain things about Islam that you have no understanding about. Do you know Arabic? I'm, I'm just trying to get an understanding of what Do you know Arabic? Because I don't know Arabic. I'm learning, but I don't know. Do you know? Well, well, Arabic is not a requirement to be a Muslim. I'm just saying that I'm just trying to get an understanding of what you know about Islam because it seems to me that your interpretation of Islam is, is completely incorrect. And I'm just trying to rectify that, right, so that the people are not misled. Now, whether you want to be a Christian is, is totally up to you. That's perfectly, perfectly uh, uh, fine. But when you start discussing issues about Islam, we have an obligation to correct the is uh, issue. And, 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 and my concern is the fact that you're talking about Islam, about any knowledge of this religion. But, but here, here's, here's, what I'm, here's what I'm going to say, because I, I really have to follow. Here's what I'm going to say. You're at the current time. There's, there's, two point, there's, there's two points that, that, that I want to make. First of all, do you know what the Nasir Creed is? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay. Now, do you understand the history of Christianity? I do. Okay, so you understand about the Nasir Creed? Yes. Hold, hold on one second. 
Me where's my coat? He believed in Allah. It's and cold. that which has yeah, been sent down to them. And that which has been sent down to Abraham. Okay, so what does this have to do with Islam? Well, I would like you to tell the people what that's about. I see in creed. Yeah, explain to the people what Christianity is really about. What Christianity really is really about yeah, from, is from the Nicene Creed, from the historical perspective. No, from the historical perspective, there's a God who loves the world. He sent Jesus to die for our sins so that we might be saved. Amen. People have disputed from the early church about. Um, uh, the identity of Jesus. Some people have said he's just a man. Some people have said he's an angel. Some people have said he's God come in the flesh. That was a major debate, but it was never a debate whether he died on the cross for sins or he was the Savior. And, it's, and the, the, the right understanding of Jesus, according to his own words, was that he truly was the revelation of God. He truly was the Son of God, which means that he truly was God come in the flesh for us. And the church agreed on that. So, so, so that belief was agreed upon. Even if you didn't agree upon it, it was undisputed that Jesus came, died for sins, and rose again. That's and, and so I have an obligation as a Christian to correct the Muslims who are preaching the preaching something that they know nothing about. They're talking about a historical event that they weren't there for. They weren't there. Uh, Jesus never spoke Arabic. Jesus never spoke Arabic. Um, you know, um, a good man. And, and, and so at the end of the day, like, look, just like you feel I have it, just like you feel I have it, you have an obligation to correct me for talking about Islam. Your older brother, the Christians, are correcting you because you're saying that you have the final revelation and the right teachings of Jesus. And we're saying, no, you don't. Because we actually have two major books, the Old and the New Testament, that agree with it. And it teaches the truth about who Jesus really is. The Nicene Creed, as you just said, was agreed upon. Right? Forget about the Nicene Creed, man. I mean, who cares about that? The, the truth... No, 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 don't forget about it, right? Because that's where Christianity begins. So don't, you must tell the people the truth. The Christianity did not begin at the Nicene Creed. Well, 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 tell me, where did your beliefs come from? Because that belief was agreed upon at the Nicene Creed. Tell you where my beliefs come from from my beliefs come from from the god i'll tell you the truth my beliefs come the first the first sign of my belief is from genesis 1 and 1 in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form god form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the spirit of god moved upon the face of the waters and said, let there be light and there was light that tells me that there's a creator and he created all things through his word and his spirit moved upon the face of the earth and that tells me that there's one god who reveals himself and has the ability to um relate with creation and that's the god that i believe in and, and, and that's fine as a christian that's what you believe not as a christian it's that you believe that god created all things through his word well, 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 what i'm trying to what i'm trying to establish is is christianity here because i i do understand what christianity is and i'm just saying to you that you should teach the people the truth about christianity if you're gonna if you're gonna stand here and discuss the issue of christianity you must explain to the people the real true christianity starting from the Nicene creed at Constantinople and you haven't done that so so that leads me to believe yeah, that leads me to believe is that your understanding of Christianity truly and, and you know you know is, is, is not necessarily based upon facts or based upon a, a scholar scholaristic point of view it's based upon emotional content and all I'm saying is that you know full well that the version of Christianity that you have today was agreed upon at the Nicene Creed, and you know this. Okay, okay, you keep, you keep, okay, can I, can I say that? You keep jumping to Nicene Creed. Look, you brought up Nicene Creed, not me. You keep jumping. Okay, look, you keep jumping to Nicene Creed. My, my friend, look, with all due respect, man, there's manuscripts, manuscripts that date as early as 100 AD, which is predating um, the Nicene Creed by 200 years, okay? There is manuscripts that were found in 1948 in Qumran that are carbon dated to 125 BC that still talk about the coming of someone who's to be born as a virgin. That That is Old Testament, Isaiah chapter 53, about a suffering servant who would die. This was the tradition of the Messiah that would come, and it's recorded pre-Jesus and even after Jesus. So no matter which way you spin it, there's enough historical evidence to demonstrate that Jesus Christ before the Nicene Creed 
He died on the cross, was buried and rose again, and he was called the Son of God. Amen. People were baptizing in his name, and people believed that he was Lord. Now, this is a fact, indisputable by history. Whether or not you think those, those manuscripts are the ones with the true tradition or not, even at the time of Muhammad, there's so many manuscripts available by his time, and there's not one that demonstrates Muhammad's story. So, no matter which way you spin it, there's more evidence for the historicity of the biblical tradition of Jesus than whatever other tradition you want to hold on to. Okay. Uh, first of all, there is no manuscript before uh, the 4th century complete manuscript. There is no, there is no complete manuscript before the 4th century. And if the proof of that is in the British Library, have a look for yourself. Because called, called the Sinaiticus, there is no man, complete manuscript. All you have is, a, is, a, is, is one, all you have is one fragment. All you have is one fragment from the Gospel. Okay, all you have is one fragment. From the Gospel of John, size of a credit card. It's not a complete manuscript. Have a look yourself in the British Library. Wait, 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 okay, wait, wait, wait. gonna run away. It's wild. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, hold on. Okay, so while I'm while I'm while I'm pulling up uh, some some uh, some manuscripts for my friend here, I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts for my friend here. I'm pulling up some manuscripts
Pray it out loud, no, brother. Pray, brother, pray this prayer with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I have sinned against you. And I need your forgiveness. You died on the cross for me. And I accept what you did on the cross for me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. I repent of my sins and I trust in you. Thank you for forgiving me. I pray this in Jesus' name. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now listen, brother, you, you, you have a lot of Christians around here. I want to give you this so that you can keep in contact with me, brother. But listen, you need to get yourself plugged into a church. You need to get yourself connected with other Christians, okay? You got a wonderful group here, okay? What's your name, brother? God bless you, brother. Amen. You know, I was praying for people, people getting healed. People are coming to Jesus, telling you about Jesus Christ, telling you about that he loves you. That, hold on. No, no, no. I, oh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm preaching. Telling people about the hope of God, that he loves you. That's what I'm here to do. I'm not here to argue with nobody. I'm not here to to, 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 to dispute with anybody. But you you want to you want me to answer your questions? And I did the best I could. But but I'm here to tell you about Jesus. I'm gonna, okay, if you don't believe in the written Quran, then stop reading the book. Stop handing it out. God bless you. Listen, if you don't believe in the written Quran, I don't. I, you know, I believe in something greater. I believe in I believe in the Word of God. And the, okay, let me ask you something. Is the word mercy? A, a personal word or no? Teach the people the Nasir. Not even that. God, God bless you, brother. God bless you. Man. Sure, go ahead. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Three sixteen. Nobody wrote the Quran. Okay. I told you the Quran is the word of the Okay. So taking into consideration, is it um John seventeen where Jesus says that they may know the one and only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So right. No. All right, Jesus himself, Yeshua said that it is written. Okay, that's why we have scriptures. That's why we have the law. That's why we have the Bible. It's written. Yeah, the scriptures are a witness. John, first, um, Second Timothy three sixteen. All, not some, not half. Scripture is given by inspiration of God. So what? Taking into consideration also that prophecy did not come by the will of men, but by God. The one true God, the only wise God. The same God, what Yeshua said, that they may know the one and only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The law was given to Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus. One more thing quickly, bless you brother, is this, there's a lot of you, we, it, right, so we know that his name is Yeshua HaMashiach, Arabic, Yeshua Al-Masihu, Greek translation, Jesus Christ, right? Before Gabriel was dispatched from heaven, he came from heaven to Mary, remember, he told Mary, the holy thing that should be born of thee, right, he shall be the savior of mankind, and you shall call his name Jesus. Yeshua Amen. Jesus you, what you're not understanding he is the eternal word the word became flesh the one the word became flesh God is eternal Amen. Yeshua HaMashiach does not lie he does not lie he himself said it is written let every man be a liar but let God be true Amen. 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 Okay. 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 okay, what can I do for you? Joseph, Joseph, now that you've read all that, right, somebody please show me where Jesus said his religion was Christianity. He didn't say that. He said follow right. us, but Okay, okay, does that answer your question, Ryan? Okay, can I can I share my, my message here that I'm here for? And yet, and yet. Can I share what I'm here for? Can I share what I'm here for? You, Wait, you, know what, you know what? What I'm here for? Listen. Can I share what I'm here for? I'm here to tell you that there's a God who loves you. 
and he loves you the religion that i preach is the preach is the religion that god has always been sharing and it's the, the religion of god's love and his mercy to mankind he wants you to be in a relationship with him he's always wanted to be in a relationship with you we've disconnected our lives from god because of our sin sin is what separates you from god and true peace sin is what sends you to hell you can believe whatever you want to believe if you believe there's any path to god by yourself without the mercy and forgiveness of god you're deceived your sin separates you from god and god sent jesus to take away your sin he is the revelation of god's forgiveness and salvation to mankind this is the truth and this is the witness of god from the beginning right into the end and if you deny what jesus christ did for you you deny the mercy of god for you and the only thing that abides with you is the wrath of god and the wrath of god is coming and it's already here it's already upon your life in fact anyone that's not in paradise today has the wrath of god on their life because of the consequences and the curses of sin that's why adam and eve was cast out of heaven that's why each one of us need the revelations of god that's why prophets are sent to people like you and i is because of our sin we've distanced ourselves from god and god is saying come back to me god continue to continues to extend his hand of mercy to all of us all of us whether you're muslim hindu whatever you are catholic god loves you god cares for you i'm, I'm just telling anybody i don't care who you are you could be homosexual today you could be whatever but god is reaching his hand to you saying you have gone astray you disconnected yourself from him and i'm making a way for you to come back Amen. that's the message that i preach if you're telling me that this message is a lie then no religion can help you no religion can help you because what is religion for anyway to reconnect you back to god and if you don't believe god made a way for you to be reconnected then what are you preaching what are you believing in and that's why i don't believe in any other religion because no other religion that i know gives anyone no one assurance of their salvation except the faith of jesus christ why because this is the only faith that deals with sin which is the problem in fact why are people telling people to believe in sharia law or, or the torah law or anything like that why it's because the law keeps people from sin and causes people to live righteous that means that without law or without god's law there's anarchy and there's chaos and so god sends his prophets with his word so that we would be rightly guided why does he care because he wants us to be in a relationship with him because his words reflect his character god lives by his word because his word is his character it's his manifest attributes and the only one that lived his manifest attributes perfectly was jesus christ that's why jesus christ reveals the invisible god and that's why jesus christ is called the son of the living god and that's why we need jesus because in order for us to know god we must know him through his revelation and jesus is the only one that revealed the character and attributes of almighty god you cannot know the almighty god without his revelation and jesus revealed it to you and jesus revealed the salvation and mercy and forgiveness of this almighty god and if you deny the revelation of god how can you know god if you deny it it's very simple if you deny the law of god you can't be reconnected to god if you deny his revelation you can't be connected to god but jesus is the only one that revealed god's attributes and character and his mercy and salvation so you deny it you don't you can't be connected to god very simple so let's not fuss about all this nonsense because the nonsense won't save you in fact your religion if it's not of jesus if it's not that jesus died on the cross i guarantee you you know and i know your religion can't even save you that's why most of the prophets are in the grave that's why 
none of you outside of Jesus Christ has any assurance that you're going to heaven. But you can have assurance. You can. God doesn't want you not to go and be with him. Otherwise, why would he send the prophets? Why would he send his law? Why would he do any of it? Why would he reveal anything if God never wanted you to know you can have a relationship with him? He wants you to know. He wants you to know. I'm going to say it again. Amen. Whatever I preach is that God wants you to know he loves you. God wants you to know you can be saved. God wants you to know you can be forgiven. God wants you to know. Today is the day of salvation. That's what I preach. And that's the only thing I preach. That you can be connected to God. And the reason why you're disconnected is because of your sin. But if your sin is dealt with, you can be reconnected to God. How does that happen? Well, it's not happening through Islam. And it's not because I'm trying to put down Islam. It's not because I'm trying to insult anybody. I think many Muslims are living better lives than a lot of Christians today, unfortunately. In fact, I would I would pick some of the some of the uh, the the um, the the moral attributes of some Muslims more than I would the UK principle. You know why? Because it seems like a lot of people in the UK are not even following the Bible. But I, I'm going to say this as well. I think if you follow the Bible, you're living a higher moral attribute than anyone else in the world. Amen. But unfortunately, a lot of people aren't living by the word of God. And so I'm not insulting anybody's good attributes. If anybody tells you to believe in one God, I think they're good. I think that's a good thing to tell people. So I'm glad Muslims are telling people to believe in one God. I think that's good. I'm glad people are saying, you know what? Abortion is wrong. Murder is wrong. Theft is wrong. That's good. I'm for anybody that says these good things. But if all you give people is morals and you don't give them salvation, what good is it? What good is it? We already know that we should live righteous, but none of us can. So all we need now is the mercy of God. And if what you have to offer doesn't give me mercy, doesn't give me forgiveness, but only leaves me more uncertain and, 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 and living on eggshells for the rest of my life, no wonder. No wonder when I see people of other faiths and religions, not even to put them down, they're walking around miserable, they're walking around with no joy, they can't dance. I, 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 I had a video online and this guy, and it's not no offense to the Muslim, my Muslim friends, but this one Muslim guy who watches all my videos, I don't know why, and if he's, he's probably watching this video, he watches all my videos because he likes some things I say, but then he sees me having joy. He's wondering why I can dance for God. And, and he's like, that's why I don't want to become a Christian. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, Jesus would never support you being so happy like that. And I'm like, so, so, I, so are you, so you, I'm afraid to ask you what your bedroom looks like with your wife. You're trying to tell me is that you're going to be so miserable. Like, oh, I can't be happy. Liar. God gave us emotions and feelings and taste and God gave us emotions and feelings, taste buds, because he wants us to feel. But if we can't feel in our religion, if our religion cuts us off from the fullness of life, that means it's dishonest. It's a dishonest religion. True religion, if God is the one, the giver of life and the taste buds and the feelings, then God wants us to experience life to his fullness in the right order. And I'm here to tell you today, pleasure is not bad. Pleasure is bad outside of its purpose. Good tasting food is not bad, but when it's junk, when it doesn't, when it doesn't do its right purpose, when it's when it's when it's not real food, then it's not good. And so God is saying this. God is saying. I made a way to you have, for you to have the fullness of life, and that's through Jesus. I don't know any other way. I don't know any other path. I don't know any other person. Amen. But I'm sorry. But I'm so sorry. But have you been, have you seen those other check, check. that all done? I don't know any other path, any other way, or any other prophet, any other religion that offers. Lasting assurance and, and salvation. Like crazy, yeah? I don't know. No, no, he said that. Um, and if you do dance, know someone better uh, than we Jesus, dance. trust me, we dance. We dance a for sure. A worthy leader. If you know anyone with a higher moral standard than Jesus, then show me and I'll believe.
I'll convert today to any person that's greater than Jesus. I'll convert to any other religion that's, that, that, that can truly offer salvation, that has a history and a proven track record from other prophets that it's the truth. I will convert. But I'm telling you today, I've looked and I've searched and it doesn't exist. Have you read the Quran? I have read it. Are you sure? Many, many times. And the Quran doesn't give any person assurance that they're going to paradise. Do you know 100% you're going to be with God in paradise? You do? How do you know that? knows what is in the heavens. I'm kidding. I know 100% you're, you're, you're the one. My Allah, my okay. Muhammad's Allah. That's true. That's you're, because you're, if you you're, said you're, 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 Why are you running? Why are you running though? Where are you going? I'm here the you're the 1% of all Muslims that seem to know. No one's who's insulting. Don't insult anybody. I didn't insult you. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't know what she said. But I, I don't know. I do, but you said no, the Muslims that don't dance. And I have you seen the Arab weddings, yes? Because they're beautiful and, and they dance. And the dance. Okay, well, I'm not insulting you. So I, I don't know what she said. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm not insulting Look, look. If, if you feel that you have assurance of salvation, that's wonderful. I, I hope you really do. Most other Muslims don't. And, and most of them would say that no one knows for certain. So you're that rare exception. I'm going to tell you the only thing that I know that can give assurance of salvation is if your sins have been paid for and you know for certain that God has forgiven you. If you know that, if you know that, that's wonderful. God bless you. But that's the only thing that can get you to paradise. In Islam, we believe that regardless of what you've done, okay, you've killed a man, you've done whatever you raped and I know everything is bad. I know grooming is bad. I know terrorism is bad. We know that this shit is bad. We understand 100%. But we know for a fact that at the end of the day, even if you've committed all these big sins, if you commit yourself and you devote yourself to Allah and Muhammad Sallallahu then regardless of what you've done, at one point you will still, you will still go to heaven. You will know, you will get your beatings. You will get your hell. You will get everything. So you're going to go to hell too? You will go to hell. You will get your beatings. You will get hell. is a place you guys have finished. I have finished. You will get everything you deserve, whether you've raped someone, whether you've killed someone, whether you've been dismissed, whether you've lied, you will get everything you deserve, but at the end of the day, you will still go to heaven. You will still go to heaven because you still have that belief, you still have that belief in your in your heart that Muhammad and I'm not saying that Jesus isn't the Son of God, he's the Apostle of God, but we believe that he's not the Son of God, because God can't have... You're not, deny, you're not denying the possibility that he Jesus, could be the Son of he's God. He's an Apostle of God, 100%. I, I, I love Jesus as much as you do. I, I believe everything as much as you do, probably way more people. I mean, I don't eat swine, I don't drink alcohol, and do I don't do shrimp? a lot of other do things. Do I eat shrimp? No. Okay, that's one. <laughs> well, do, 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 do you go to synagogue? I go to the mosque. Do you, do you celebrate um, Passover? No. no. So you don't do much that okay, Jesus but, did. But I, how, do, how is it that I know the Lord's Prayer? Do you pray towards heart? Jerusalem? No, I know the Lord's Prayer. Okay, Jesus my did. I, I, went, be I went to a Protestant school. I was well, I mean, you just you just made a you just made a but you just said you probably were. You I probably, know, yeah, I probably do. Uh, but you don't know me, and I don't know you. That's fine. That's okay. But anyway, look, I'm not here to argue. If you feel that you have assurance and you want to have, I just feel like wonderful. I, I don't think you can without Jesus. I feel like you've misconceived a lot of things about Islam, and you. No, I didn't misconceive anything. I, feel like you have I I'm just saying, I just said if there's a better leader than Jesus that offers salvation, Jesus I will convert. Wasn't a leader. He was a prophet. So, so a apostle is not a leader. An a prophet. apostle is someone, is someone that leads ways, but he wasn't. So who is the Jesus was okay, who is, who is the leader? Someone here, someone here, someone here, exactly, literally right here, said that Jesus is the Son. The Father Every and the Holy Spirit. How can you be thinking that? Okay, no, no. I don't care what people said. Who is who? Okay, I don't care. Listen. Okay, no, you're talking to me. Hey, hold on, hold on. Okay, who cares what people say? Who's the leader? Allah. 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 Isa is going to kill the Dajjal or God? Isa, Isa, we'll just, I, I, we just passed that already we where we just nice read from what that. Muhammad himself said that he said he needs forgiveness. Asking forgiveness. So, Asking forgiveness. I mean, so I, look, like, I'm not here to like, if, if he's going to destroy the, the greatest problem that has ever, that would ever plague humanity. It's not Jesus that's going to be forgiving you. It's not Muhammad that's going to forgive you. It's the 
Okay. Okay, so let, let's say God forgives you. Do you know that you have that forgiveness in your life right now? Inshallah, I hope, I hope it does. You hope, hope, but you're not sure. Inshallah, no, I'm not sure because Allah is the greatest. So why waste he's, my time? He's all merciful though. But why waste my time? Why lie to me and then at the end of the day the say you're not even the sure? Says, the thing the oh, wait a second, wait a second. We are, no, wait a second. You said you want to have a civil discussion with me and I'm fair. I was, I was telling you, like, if you feel it, like, great. No, listen to me, listen to me. I'm listening to you. Listen to me. Look, I've been fair with you, man. Like, I'm not here to try to trap you. I said to you, if you feel you have assurance of your salvation, wonderful. God bless you. And you know what? We could have just been... You told me that you know for certain. And now you're telling me you don't. But wait, but wait. There was so now you just there fooled was, all these wait, people. No, I haven't fooled anyone. So don't, which don't one is it? Make me look okay, like an idiot. I'm not I trying to make you... YouTubers do. Like, well, edit it's and it's not like, a YouTube... No, no, this is live streaming. It's no edit. Did you not say... Okay, explain. In the Quran and in the Bible, I'm sure there was someone called the Fir'aun. God said that he's all merciful and that he's... The first, the, from the first chapter you open the Quran, it says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. It means all merciful and all forgiving. Okay? He, didn't, for, he didn't forgive one person that was the Fir'aun. That one person, that is why I'm saying, that's why I'm saying, I'm not 100% sure that he's going to forgive me, but I know for a fact I will still enter heaven because I have that, that shahad in my heart. That's why. So, there, so you're not 100% sure that he will forgive you, which means you don't have forgiveness now, number one. And number two, is there still could be that one little percent a possibility. You already said we're all gonna go to hell. So you're saying so there's no hell. No. Okay, hold on. Hold on. No. You said in your own words that everyone's gonna go to hell. I'm saying no, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Okay. Okay. I said that everyone will go to hell at some point, but they'll go to heaven at some point. Okay. Do you understand? Okay, okay, I got you. I get you. So everyone's gonna taste hell a bit. And some people will stay, some people will escape. Is that what you're saying? No, some people stay in Islam. Muslims, this is what we believe in. Please don't get insulted into Islam. I'm not insulted. But what we believe is if you're Muslim and you believe in the Shahada, so that's the Hadith and the Sunnah, so that's the Prophet and God, so then you will at some point enter heaven. But you will still be punished for the sins that you have done. So you'll still go to hell a bit. Okay, well, you, again, you're not, you're just setting your own words that you're not sure that you're going to be forgiven. Am I correct? Am I saying it there's right? There's forgiven and there's punishment. Okay, but you said, okay, okay either so we're, you're confusing me now. I'm not, no, I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm not trying to confuse you. Okay, 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 which one is it? I'm, I'm Do you know, English. you just said, inshallah, I hope that God would forgive you, but I'm not 100% sure. No, Did you no, not I'm say that? I will get punished. I will get punished and I hope I get forgiven. I know for a fact I'm going to heaven. Regardless of what I've done, I will so, go to heaven. Okay, so which one is it? You hope you'll be forgiven or you know you're going to be forgiven? No, oh my God. It's <laughs> not. No, no, no. I did. I'm going to go. There's just two things I've been doing. We've been like, forgiven here and now. Like, I will get my punishment. I will get my punishment. Okay. But whether that is God's way to forgive me, it's exactly. How, how, long, how, how, long, how long are you going to be punished for? I don't know. But like, like, one day, one day in hell is a year. So I don't know. Regardless one day is a year. I will, yeah. Okay, so. I will how, how, okay, so let me ask you something. So how serious is sin in the eyes of God? Like eternally serious? I would say, see, I'm not a scholar. I'm literally, I'm literally come out of college. So I'm speaking to you more of my own knowledge. So if anyone was to watch this and say that she's saying wrong, okay, fine. You're not a scholar. I'm not, I'm not holding I'm you to that. Not but I, I think sin is eternally serious from God because in God there is no speck of sin. So any little bit of sin would be an eternity for you to even pay off because God is so perfect that that there can't be any speck in his life. So there can be no sin at all? At all. None. Not with God. Unless you believe God is a sinner. Right, we are. That's, that's why it takes a perfect sacrifice and a perfect God to cover you. It's Jesus. Amen! Yeah! Amen! You get it, man! That's why you're smiling. You know. Wait, wait, wait. Who said you're making it sound like someone just forced something on somebody? Somebody chose to be your savior. Someone chose to be your savior. God is the ultimate savior. He loves you. God, but is God Jesus? Right. God who came and dwelt within a human being, and that human being. He blew into Jesus. No, he didn't blow into Jesus. Okay, even if you believe, let's, let's just say he blew his soul into Jesus. That makes the Father, him the Son of God. How does that make him the Son of God, literally? Okay, listen to me. 
if he if he blew into Jesus into Mary, that means God put his seed into Mary, and and that child was called the Son of God. Because okay, not obviously not literally. Like he didn't have physical sex spiritually. Spiritually. I know back in the day, like way, 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 way back, they used to call religious people the son of God. They used to call religious people. So let's, let's okay. So let's call them the sons of God. Yeah. Do you know any son of God that was perfect like Jesus? I don't know a son of God. But I know an apostle of God. Okay, so let's call him the apostle of God. He's the apostle of people. He's a leader of somebody, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to work with your definitions here. If he's the apostle, he must be leading somebody, right? He led Christians. Christians. But no offense, you Christians, you took the Bible and you kept writing in it, you kept writing in it, you kept editing in it, and it's not okay, how, how about this? How about so it's this? It has been edited in the Bible. Why? I don't get that. Yeah, because you don't get it because you didn't study it. But the, but the, but That's why I'm asking you. Yeah, so the, the Old Testament wasn't written by the Uma of Jesus. It was before Jesus. Everything in the Old Testament was before Jesus. The angel is during the time of Jesus and after. So that's the reason why we have the older than new. So isn't there like a Martin Luther version and there's like a Luther version? There's different English. No, no, no. no there's, there's other English translations or versions. Well, I know there's only one Quran and there's only one version of Quran. One. That's okay. Look, look, you're learning and I'm here to help and you, and you have your questions. Like, I'm not here to help if you. If you believe you're under... I know you were. I, if you... If you salvation, like, I didn't get like... I know in Islam, I'm not here to insult you. Did you feel? Did you feel I was insulted? Because you said I don't know about Islam, but I know about my religion. Did I? Did I insult you? Did you really feel? I felt a bit insulted. Okay. What if I? What if I would have said to you? Okay. I get you. I get you. No, we were here first. They came after. They, they came out. No, no, we, no, weeks, but today I was here first. They came out. Talk about Jesus. What right do they have to talk about my Jesus? When they're not even the Ummah of Christians. No, you can't. No, 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 no. That's the same thing. You feel offended that I'm talking about Islam and reverting and rewriting your Islam. Meanwhile, 600 years later, someone's talking about my religion, trying to rewrite it and say this is what the real teaching is. We have got the exact same scripture that Allah gave to us. We have You don't have the same scripture. No, listen to me. You feel that way, believe that way, and I'm not gonna tear that on. If you, if that's what you believe, just study, just like you expect me to study. I hope, I hope. No, 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 okay. not, not just off the book. Like, literally go into detail. I, I, and I will more and more. And I encourage you to do that on the on the on the origin and the transmission of the Quran as well. And, and you might discover some things that you didn't know, and and I might discover some things I don't know. But. But in all fairness, it's not fair to say that you're offended by my rendition of what I believe about Islam. I mean, it's offensive for you saying... Say, it's not fair to for me to have an opinion about Islam or Christianity, and I share that, to say that you're offended when when I, I hear things being talked about about Jesus and, and renditions of my, my, my belief <laughs> that are not even true according to what I believe. And we are the ones that are the women of the Christians, not you guys. So we've the ones been the ones transmitting the message of Christ and Jesus, not you guys. And and so it's not right. So if, I don't I'm not saying I'm offended by anything you say. Like you can say whatever you want about Jesus. That's okay. But at least allow the same freedom that I have for me to and I'm not it's not intended to offend you. The same way you feel you're not intending to offend me by telling me stuff. I'm telling you that God loves you, Jesus died for you. So the intention is not to offend you, the intention is actually to bring you closer to God. It is two different things, and I'm glad you acknowledge that. But here's what I gotta say, man. No matter which way you spin it, just look at the life of Jesus. And if you have, you appreciate him. If he's the apostle for you, he definitely led people somewhere. He, he definitely espoused a message of something. He's called Esau for a reason. His name means Savior. That's the meaning of his name. The Injil means good news. The reason why the message of the Savior 
brought good news, according to the Quran, is because there's something in his news that was good. It's not, Jesus' message was not called the Quran, it wasn't called the Torah, it wasn't called the Zabur. It was called the Injil. Injil means good news. So just figure out what that good news was, and all the rest will make sense. Trust me, we believe in Christianity. No, 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 we don't believe in the modern Christianity. Okay, hold on, forget modern Christianity. Okay, forget about that. All I said was, figure out what that good news was, and then everything will be clear. And I hope you do the same with Muhammad's Sure, sure. I'll, I'll continue to study about it. You do that. Yeah, no, I will. And, 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 but again, good news. Look, find out what that good news was. Find out, study from the Quranic text. Deep into the Shahada. Trust me. And don't don't just read the Quran. Read Sahih al-Bukhari as well. Trust me, that's really good. No, I'll read it. I'll read it more. I, I mean, I I bought all of Sahih uh, al-Bukhari's. Uh, I have it. Actually, I brought it with me too. I have it with me. So it's not that I'm you quoted it earlier. Sorry, you quoted it earlier. Yeah, I did. I actually quoted it earlier, but you know, listen, you know, God loves you. God loves you, and, and I, I, I only respect you, and I wish you the best, and I, and I hope that you have assurance, and I hope that you do make it. We're not all backwards. We're not all terrorists. I'm not here to say. When did I say you were all? When did I say that? I don't care what people say. No, that's not what I'm saying. I do not believe, for the record, that all Muslims are terrorists. I don't believe that all Muslim people. Are bad people. I don't believe that. What well, anyone that would say that is, is kind of silly because everybody has choices. Everybody's different. I think you, you might be a wonderful. You have a wonderful smile. The fact that you're having a conversation means you're you're a great person in some in some capacity. So I don't know every detail of your life. You don't know the detail of my life, but I can tell you God loves you. Let me give you something. Just, let me give you something. One second. Come, let us call our sons and daughters. This is, this is a gift. This is the, this is the message I, I talk about, and I'll, and I'll break it down for you it's just very quickly. And, and it's very simple. It's uh, God loves you. I have sinned. Jesus died for me. I need to decide to live for God. That's it. Very simple message of God's love for you, and, and, I, and I just want to just just want to give that to you. It's a gift for me to you. And, that's all. Yeah, that one you know what? Go to that stool. They have they have a thing about Jesus. Read it. Yeah, sure. Even if you don't agree, just read it. No, no, no. I, I love reading. Reading is more knowledge and it gives me greater guidance. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Take care, guys. All right, take care. God bless you guys. Uh, I'm, 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 yes. Basically, I'm called to preach on the streets. Amen. Yes. But I get very passionate and very, and I'm learning so much from you about how you're measured. And I'm your calm, and I don't have that in the world. Lord, Lord God's gonna give it to you. Father, yeah. Lord God, I just pray for my brother, Lord God. He's trying to just follow you, and he loves you, and he wants to do what is right. Bless him with confidence, live in the power of the Holy Spirit. Show him, Lord, your grace. Show him your love. Show him that you're with him. And Lord, whatever is causing this uh, the fear or, or the, the anger or the Lord, just give him the peace that passes all understanding. Pray for him in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus name. Amen. So I find you so measured. Oh, you deal with people. But I get worked up because I'm so passionate about God. And I'm going to get it out there. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I need to learn. Oh, I'm learning. I'm learning too. I'm not perfect either. And I don't want that to discourage me because I'm not so measured. No, no. Yeah. Not everybody's the same, and we all learn and grow. Yeah. I'm learning. I didn't. Uh, I've been a Christian for 22 years, right? You gave the Christians here a mild rebuke. If I could speak, I'd give them a serious rebuke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, doing good, man. Keep up the good work, bro. Yeah. We gotta pack up and go to. Uh, I think we're late. Yeah. Bro. Oh, okay. yeah. Sure we are. Anyway, enjoy the best. Let's extend to the people. Jesus loves us. You know, extend to the people what's up for Jesus. Jesus, number one for everybody. Yes. If someone is turned to Jesus, Jesus never forget. Jesus is coming one day. You gotta give me the chance. Amen. Jesus. One for everybody. You explain child the best. If someone's learned you, say thank you. Don't forget, Jesus is the best. Amen, God bless you, brother. Thank you, thank you. Why do you mix two with four? Amen. Amen.
it's going to be lots of hope. But, uh, I think I'm, I think I'm coming towards. I think I'm coming towards. No sugar, sugar. Yeah, I'm offered him no sugar bar, for him. Uh, Thank you. To be a man, as I said, to, uh, to I down, but, uh, I've heard you say it many times of man, the dog guy like he's from the United States. I'm from the United States. I mean, some sort of technology. It's out. It's out. Yeah. How y'all doing? Uh, I have to explain it because I want to get my heart to We're fixing to leave here pretty moment. soon. Yeah. That's how we're going to get to the body because it's been, it's been a while. It's, the, it's, it's sin and the devil. That's, 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 that's simple. It's sin and the devil. Sin is, it, repenting of sin doesn't always uh, come easy. Some some things you take some suffering. It, 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 it's pulling, but you gotta make that decision not to do it. It's, it's like uh, like being here. Um, there's actually uh, uh, you know a brother who um, it kept me on on the on the track when it comes to uh, waking up. Sometimes you know it, it's tough. You don't want to get up, but you wake up and say, here's a coffee and. And my body's like, no, but you just have to just do it. And when you start doing it in the beginning, it sucks, but eventually it works out. So you have to go through that, can't give in. And uh, the only thing that's going to help you to give in is sometimes having having a local church you go to. Uh, so I think I need to be surrounded by yeah. at the moment because I'm not surrounded by any of them moment. That's when I seem to be going back. When I watch your videos, I seem to mellow down and just want to tell, read my Bible and yeah. Yeah. Uh, I just wonder if you guys... Just know, double check, just to reassure everything you're saying. I don't want it to be from Jehovah. I want to make sure for myself to know that you're telling the truth. Right, right, that's good. You're a truth man and I know that now. After many years of listening to you, all I have to do is take your word now and I know. No, 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 never just... No, no, I do, I will, I will. No, I do. Okay, that's okay. People ask me about stuff, about Bible, I'm getting excited. I'm like, yes, what do you want to talk about? What do you want? Well, let me pray for you, brother. Father, Lord, thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I pray, Father, for my brother Daniel. God is the judge. Lord, be the judge in his life by removing all the the, the, the negativity, bring judgment upon the enemy that has been trying to keep this man down. Bring judgment upon every demonic force that has been surrounding and connecting itself to him. Bring judgment upon the fallen angels that have been trying to keep back his lineage from finding you walking with you. But be the judge in his life. Bring justice to him through your son Jesus Christ. So whoever believes on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved and his family. So bless this man with your judgment as his name is God is judge. Be strong in his life. Fill him with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Breathe upon him, oh God. Give him strength and courage to face his fears, to face his, his giants. Oh, uh, uh, mine is. Uh, uh, bless this man. Do uh, Jesus name. B I O. Man. I Thank you. I even come to that point about five months ago. I'm going to go to Toronto. Yeah. And I'm going to go and see it myself. Well, now you here. told me you're coming here to see hey, me. Man. So you say me something. <laughs> so no, 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 I've just come back from Wales about You say that God's so perfect. I'm not a Christian woman. I'm not a Christian You say God is so perfect. So, and so perfect. Why then did he chose to have a manifestation of himself, like in the light of the Genesis, manifested through the word, then come to If he is so perfect and God is. Yeah, because, because the world is not bad. He said he created all things good. It's just the corruption of the world through sin makes it bad.
bad. So nothing in this world is bad. And so God can, the Bible says earth, um, heaven is, uh, heaven is his throne, earth is his footstool. So that means that God has the ability to, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters in the universe. And so if God, the Spirit of God can move in the universe, that means the universe is not bad. It's the sin that's bad. So dwelling within a human flesh is not bad because Jesus was pure, undefiled. That's why he was the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. Well, he was tempted in every way, yet without sin. He, 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 he can feel pain. The Bible says he wept. I mean, that's a human emotion and expression. It's not necessarily a sin or not. I mean, God made us with feelings, and as human beings, He was a full man. You asked out there, but I think you want to know the answer. You said you made the plan. That. Yeah. Well, you know the answer. I think you've already. Well, I know the answer. Yeah, you already know because you, you are intelligent enough. You know that Muhammad could have been alright, so it was given by Abraham and Gabriel, and he was both people in the faith. Right. But it's exactly the same as the Bible. Though. Well, the what? difference with the Bible is that we have the actual inspired Word of God that came from the Holy Spirit. They have what they believe is the Word of God from an angel that we don't even know. Uh, that it is actually the age of Gabriel. So, and on top of it, um, there's no verifying when. Yeah, we gotta actually go to another area. We're late. We're late, actually. Thank you. Yeah. I think he might need to put a hole. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, I'm so glad to see you. Where you come from, bro? Okay, I think we gotta pack up now, guys. Uh, God bless. Keep praying for us. We gotta go. You're talking about the place to 